Hey guys, I want to talk to you about um, keeping tree frogs. Um, these particular ones are Ludwiga Iwigi, which is whistling brown tree frogs. Um, these guys are quite fascinating, quite 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 jovial things to have in in a, in a terrarium. They they're very friendly. They get used to the owners, and um, they quite love all sorts of insects. When our little one frog looks like this little fella here, they are a naturally small frog. These ones are probably about, a little bit bigger than housefly at this size of little froglets. Um, they quite enjoy things to eat, such as um, fruit flies, which this pot is consist of. I'll talk about um, doing pots of fruit flies for your own fish and, and also for your frogs in a later video. Um, these guys are very easy to keep. They definitely need things to climb on, such as trees and pot plants. Um, I've got various types of pot plants in here, yeah, as well as a uh, black taro, um, which which they seem to like climbing on top. You find that they would get quite active sometimes, and it'll be jumping around all over the place. Um, this is my breeding setup. I do have a number of frogs, and they're quite hard to find sometimes, though. And um, all various different sizes. Excuse my shaky camera. Um, the big ones will um, eat things such as fly, proper house flies, and um, caterpillars, grubs, beetles, slaters, anything that you can that will fit in their mouth. Um, now, there's these guys. You got to watch with what things you give them. When I mean, you don't want to give them any poisonous sort of um, insects. Um, because they will sort of snap at anything that moves, and it's it's usually good to give them something that they would um that they would, could they could um swallow. Um, and the rule of thumb of feeding these guys is to um, not feed them anything that's bigger than their head. All right, so they'll, they'll definitely have a snap at it, but they will sort of half choke on it, and um, they just tend to get um, quite, yeah it looks like they struggle for a fair bit um, and yeah these, these guys are as I say quite fascinating to watch um, they're really, really a lot of fun um, they get used to the um, owners and things uh, it's always good to have a little water source at least um, especially if they want to start spawning things like that, or have a little sprinkler system that sprays every so often which you can install in your terrarium um, and that also helps your plants because plants can sort of die off sometimes and um, in conditions without a sprayer because you've got the water down one part and you've got, even though you've got your drainage it doesn't always tend to work so well with your pot plants um, they, they yeah, um, so um, having a water source is a good thing because they do like to have a bit of water. They like to stay moist, but you probably never find them really swimming in there. Um, if you have just water, they will drown. Um, but they do like to lay the eggs in the water and under the weed. Um, so, so it's important that they have a lot of land and a lot of uh, material and plants to climb up. Otherwise, you end up having lots of problems and. Um, not be very successful. Um, yeah, so, so they definitely need plants as a must to climb up as they are tree frogs and not, not um, waterborne frogs. And they must have a little bit, at least a little bit of water that they can sort of sit beside. They don't necessarily go in it, but they'll absorb the water if they just pop a foot in there and on a rock on a rocky sort of ledge, like that sort of over, overlapping water. Um, yeah, but you really find them swimming in, in the water. Um, yeah, um, so so these guys are, uh, are very small, um, like a lot of tree frogs are quite small, um, if I give you an example of how small they are, these particular ones here, I'll put my finger up to here, oops, it's popped away, <laughs> but um, yeah, they, you've got all sorts of various sizes, and then, um, as they get bigger, they don't really get 
that big at all. Um, as big as I'll get is from the tip of your finger to probably a little bit bigger than the first joint. So um, yeah, um, really really nice things to have. Very fascinating. Yes, excuse my poor camera <laughs> tactics. Quite often you find them if you have your pots of um, of fly foods, you'll find them come up and sit on the pots expectant. And they'll be waiting for you to put your pots in and um, they'll be coming up to have a good old snack. It's always good to have a good supply of food. And having live food, um, do it yourself, live food is a must because uh, in the winter time it can be quite hard to um, find food for them. Now a lot of frogs will um, hibernate but whistling brown tree frogs tend not to and they'll live through the winter. You can even find the tadpoles, um, with, you can even find find their tadpoles in um, under frozen water. I've been told, and around the South Island sometimes, um, they've been known to find be found in puddles, large puddles that are frozen over. Um, so yeah, there's no real hibernation of these guys. I mean, um, your bell frogs they'll hibernate through the winter, um, yeah, but these guys tend not to. Or they have what's called a semi-hibernation where they they'll 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 go to sleep for about a week or two and they'll be up again and just continue like that. Um, yeah. Any questions or anything? I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Yeah, and we we do breed these guys. And um, so so if anyone is interested in these guys and want some information on on how to keep them and not um, yeah, I mean how to keep them, how to feed them, what what's need doing with them it just gives a yell and I'll be more than happy to tell you about how to do these guys or, or yeah